Hello, welcome to episode five, five of the six. Chatting Ball podcast yeah. with Sam and Ahmed. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this week, Champions League, the Premier League's hotting up a bit. Yeah, it's been an eventful week in football, obviously, for Man United. Yeah. Well, I mean, Manchester is red like my blood, and I couldn't believe it. Honestly, I was sitting there, I think you were here. I was like being so pessimistic. I was thinking it's gonna be like a nil nil, yeah. or Man City gonna score one nil, and then obviously put the game into cruise control. Yeah. We didn't end up like that. Obviously, um, Jesus just being daft. I think Jesus just stupid panicked. penalty. It's stupid actually penalty it's actually a way. gift yeah. given to us. We take a one nil lead, and then Luke Shaw, who's been probably um, up there with Bruno in terms of our best player of the season, comes up with a great goal. He's um, definitely most improved this mm, season, Luke Shaw. So. And, then, and then what's weird is we've managed to see out the game with a clean sheet against probably, arguably, the best attack in the Premier League, which yeah. is just crazy to me. Obviously, it's it's a bit of sweet victory, I'd say, because it kind of shows the lack of consistency sometimes Man United have yeah. and how great we could be because we turned up against City, but where was that team against Palace, you know? I don't know. I know what you mean. Where was that team against Sheffield United? Exactly. <laughs> Sheffield you know, United. I, I, and Palace weren't exactly a great de- defensive side, as Spurs proved well, yeah. you know, on the weekend. Awful, you they? know, with Kane, Son, and now Bale coming into the equation. Yeah. You know, know they're looking great. Spurs are looking like a dangerous attack. Look, actually, I didn't expect it. And yeah. Is it too little, too late? Mm. Probably because yeah. that fr- and his front three going to work. Mm. Like Kane is just better. You or Kane is just Son. They can't do both. No, no, but, you can't do. I mean. The thing is, they seem to be gelling quite well together. I think it's finally working out. I think Bale's finally got his fitness back up. Yeah. I think that was a big issue that Mourinho, I think, addressed a lot, saying that mm. Bale's not really ready for it yet. But now, this, he, he, the team he has looks quite very promising. But again, it comes back to is it little too late. Do you think they'll make top four? No. I don't think they will. I don't think Liverpool will make top four either. Mm. I think Liverpool's season's falling apart now. But that's yeah. a different topic. Yeah. Anyway, I, I did see a thing that really interested me. Bale is the top earner in the Premier League by £225,000 a week. That is crazy. That's absolutely mental. He's on £600,000 a week How for a player it? who's played, what, two good games all mm. season. Mm. He's been there for a year yeah. and he's played twice, twice well. How, how, does it, how does it break that? Because he's still technically on loan from the Madrid, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he, it's he half and half. Wow. So Tottenham are paying 300 grand, Real Madrid are paying 300 grand. That's actually but mental. I can't see Tottenham can't afford six hundred grand. No. It destroys their wage structure if mm. Bale joins for six hundred grand because then Harry yeah. Kane's only on one hundred and twenty grand a week. Yeah, no, like, yes, it's a lot, but mm. it's not much compared to six hundred grand. And then Kane, and Kane, Harry Kane will argue his case, and perhaps yeah. you might you might see him move yeah. this summer. You I know, can, we I can imagine him moving. Yeah. PSG are in through, aren't they? Mm. I think PSG. I think PSG would be a good fit back with Pudge again. Yeah, you know, so that would be something, but. It's just one of those ones when you see Spurs now playing really well, uh, considering when they back with that six one. It's again it comes to this thing that I haven't seen in the Premier League, which is form and consistency. Yeah. The only ones who have been consistent at best are City. The rest of the Prem hasn't. You know, look at Leicester. Leicester again, they've been suffered with the plague of injuries. Yeah. I mean they lost Barnes now, Madison, I think Madison's coming Ma- back. Madison's soon. out for a bit. Yeah. But they've had so many injuries this season. They lost Justin, Justin, they lost in the first six months. Yeah. They had Castagna out for a couple of months. Mm. They had uh, Dennis Pryor, who yeah. was their backup for Miles and Madison yeah. was, but and now obviously they they narrowly beat uh, Bri- uh, Brian by I think it was two one. Mm. And they didn't look I think I can see them slipping. I, I, I can't see them staying consistent no. now. I mean, they're out of Europe. There's only so much Jamie Vardy can do. Yeah. They're out of Europe now, which perhaps will act as a good thing for them because they Probably. don't have a big enough squad to compete in the Premier League. get injured. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So maybe that can help them and cement them, yeah. unlike other teams who are trying to fight in it, like Liverpool. Yeah. Uh, they have the Champions League, Spurs have Europa League. Yeah. But they can act as great gateways to get back into it. And obviously, uh, that, that's, that's how the teams want to play. I think Spurs, I think Mourinho is going to do the same thing he did with us. Probably put all his eggs into that Europa League yeah. basket. And hope that it holds and doesn't break and crack on the yeah. floor. It'd be a disgrace if Spurs won the Europa League, though. Mm. I mean, oh, they can't have Spurs win the trophy. I know, I know. It'll be Ill. I mean, their, their fans will finally think they're have a big club to now. celebrate. I know. They do think they're a big club. Yeah. There's no reason to think If they just have club. a big empty fishbowl stadium, mm. that's why they think they're big. Yeah. A big fishbowl with no They've got fish lovely in speakers in <laughs> Yeah. It's a great NFL venue, apparently. <laughs> but, um,. Yeah, with that is it, it comes back to that, and and I think Spurs will try and do that. Um, I think they've got an easy round sixteen 
fixture again. They've got uh, Dynamo Moscow. No, Kiev. Kiev. Well, someone like that. I haven't seen Zagreb. Them. Yeah, Zagreb. Zagreb. That's who they've got. Did he knock out Leicester? Was that one? No, that was. I was supported something. These these are your for league team names. Oh god, they're they're right. Right. yeah. I know, for a pair of Englishmen, yeah, that's so hard. Teams. They're hard to remember. Um, was it Olympiacos who knocked out someone? Uh, I don't know. But it, oh, I, I mean, know. back to Spurs, though, that, it looks like a possible Champions League final. Yeah, it looks like a possible Champions League final. Yeah, it looks like a possible Champions League final. Yeah, it looks like a possible Champions League final. Yeah, it looks like a possible Champions League final. Yeah, it looks like a possible Champions League final. Yeah, it looks like a possible Champions League final. Yeah, it looks like a possible Champions League final. Yeah, it looks like a possible Champions League final. Yeah, it looks like a possible Champions League final. Yeah, it looks like a possible Champions League final. Yeah, it looks like a possible Champions League final. Yeah, it looks like a possible Champions League final. Yeah, it looks like a possible Champions League final. Yeah, it looks like a possible Champions League final. Yeah, it looks like a possible Champions League final. Yeah, it looks like a possible Champions League final. Yeah, it looks like a possible Champions League final. Yeah, it looks like a possible Champions League final. Yeah, it looks like a possible Champions League final. Yeah, it looks like a possible Champions League final. Yeah, it looks like and obviously Dallo scored that great goal on the weekend, I don't know if you yeah, saw it, yeah. and he actually looks good, so who knows, he might be motivated to turn up to United. Dallo looks like a versatile fullback. Yeah. Honest with you. And then obviously if we get knocked out, it could just become just cementing runners up. So right. you know, what we could see is just us playing like a mid-table Premier League side. We're like, yeah. alright, we've got nothing to play for now, we've got the FA Cup on like every two weeks, let's just cement our second place, because I don't think we'll catch up City. I mean, to catch up City would mean until they like, lose four in a row and us to yeah. win four, four in a row, which just isn't happening. <laughs> and if it does, then you always falter at yeah. one of them games, wouldn't you? But, yeah. you know, you know. And at the time of recording this, I think the City have Southampton tonight, so yeah. I think they'll cruise to that as well. I could be wrong, I but, hope so. you know, then it will be. I and so. and this is rotation. You're not a City fan, I can't deal with you winning the league. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, if we won the league, that'd be crazy. Yeah. But you know, this season as well has been great for me because we talked about it earlier. But seeing Liverpool perform so badly mm. is also so great to me. Yeah. That Fulham result came out of nowhere for me, but I'm not shocked. Well, it didn't, it did, yeah, it didn't really come out of nowhere because Fulham mm. are on such good form at the moment, and Liverpool are not at all. Like, Liverpool can't play football at the moment, they can't score, they can't defend. I think dropping one of the dropping both of their centre midfielders. Fabinho and Henderson into defence mm. hasn't worked for him no. because it's meant Thiago had to drop into that holding mm. role and like Kurt Jones has been maybe one of their best players this mm. year and that's say, really saying something that's really saying something Kurt Jones has outperformed the world's best midfielder last year Thiago yeah. and, and now we're seeing players that are these like immovable objects that I've always seen that Liverpool team like Mane your Salah your Trent being benched yeah benched by Klopp that's crazy you know, key figures in this team. And I think you said it when we were watching it, it's quite true. They look out of confidence. They look like they don't, don't believe they can win. No. And that's crazy to think that in, in the past three years, I'd argue, we've seen this strong Liverpool team rise and rise strong and, and, and look like, okay, they could win something, yeah. potentially make a dynasty. But now I, I can't see them winning anything. Let, let alone. Uh, no, I can't. I think they're going to have to rebuild in the summer because mm. I can't see... All, I can't see all three of Firmino, Mane, Salah all staying. Mm. I don't see. I don't think Firmino's worth over thirty million at the moment. No. I, I think they're gonna have to sell Salah or Mane. Yeah. To fund a rebuild. Yeah. And get well proper centre back in because mm. Ozan can back. Let's be honest. Awful. He's awful. been awful. I, I, he, and he's from. And he's I mean, from it's no surprise that he's been awful. Yeah. It's part of the worst Bundesliga defence ever. Uh, and, he, but, and yeah, he's he's from Shafter. That's like if you had a Bugatti Veyron. And I give you a Fiat 500 engine, yeah. engine brake. It's not going to fix it. It no. won't. It'll barely do the job. Exactly. So when when you see that, when you see a player like him coming in, you have got to question who's doing the city uh, transfers for Liverpool. I mean, a couple of seasons ago, he looked like one of the best young centre backs in Europe. Mm. And, all right, yes. A couple of seasons ago, maybe I can see him signing and coming into the team slowly. But throwing him in at that Liverpool and expecting him to be a replacement for either Joe Gomez or Van Dijk. Hmm. Either of them, it's not going to work. No, it won't. You'll know what. I think Van Dijk losing him so early on in the season has been a massive blow. Mm. I think, because as, 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 as someone probably, as a CDM, a centre mid, left winger, what have you, who plays forward roles and stuff like that, when you look behind, you've got Van Dijk. It's probably a good confidence because you know, yeah. he's controlling the ball, he's dominant and stuff like that. He's one of the best centre backs in the world, it pains me to say it. But him missing is just. Open up so much. Alisson looks far weaker. Yeah. Alisson, I, Alisson, and I can't tell the difference sometimes between him and Adrian when they're net. No. Because I, he, he looks like he's making basic mistakes. Against Liverpool, uh, Leicester, when they collided together. I mean, yeah, I've I never know. seen that from the no. Premier League champions side. So, I don't know. I mean, maybe we'll see them do really, really well in the Champions League. Maybe we'll see. I mean, maybe. We could see them come seventh and win the Champions League. Yeah, like, uh, it, it reminds me very much of Di Matteo's. Oh, well, technically, Andrew Villas-Boas' Chelsea mm -hmm. side, 
when he got sacked midway through the season and they still had the Champions League. And they did terrific in the Champions League. And, you know, you could see it again, but it's just one of them ones, you know? Yeah. Let us know, Liverpool fans, in the comments. If yeah. you'd be happy with winning the Champions League if it means you finish 7th mm. or 8th or well 6th. Miss out on the top four, but win the Champions League, mm. let us know. But yeah, yeah, Manchester Derby was a great game. Yeah. Do you think the title race is still on? No. I, I, I hate to say it, I'm really, really, like, obviously deluded at times, but I think it's over. I think City have won perhaps probably the, the worst race in terms of Premier League titles. Yeah. I think no one's really ever turned up. I mean, the, the biggest shocks have been teams just underperforming. You know, like we talked about Liverpool there, that they, you know, everyone thought Liverpool again would just redo what they did. And I thought they would do, redo what they did, but. I don't know, maybe it's this lockdown, COVID world we live in, maybe yeah. that has an impact on it. I don't know, but they've been poor. And again, I think Pep realistically wants to focus more on the Champions League more. Yeah. I think he gives more of a... I mean, that's the that. benefit you get with having such a massive squad like City have. Mm. They've got two great left-footed centre-backs, they've got three great right-footed centre-backs. I mm. mean, they lost Eric Garcia a couple mm. of weeks ago, who was a key player for him yeah. at the start of the season. And no one even realised he's gone. Mm. I only found out a couple of days ago on Twitter mm. that he's left, he's gone to Barcelona. It's crazy. It's just like, they've got so much depth. Mm. They've got four full-backs who can all play. Yeah. They've got like two mm. fielders that are all great. They've got, they've got forwards who can score goals, midfielders. I mean, like when De Bruyne, like we talked about when De Bruyne were injured, mm. I was rubbing my hands thinking, this is the downfall yeah. of City, like how Liverpool lost Van Dijk. I thought it was yeah, yeah. the same, same type of pattern, but Gundogan comes in, uh, he's a great player as it is anyway, but takes that role, takes it he with does. pride. He takes that De Bruyne role over. And did it really, really yeah, well. And obviously now he's back in the team, but obviously he's been, I think, played in a more of a deeper role and stuff yeah. like that. You see still in him getting involved, but he doesn't do what De Bruyne is doing. No. But it's still, it shows that they can still carry on, yeah. even when, you know, certain things are When players like, like Phil Foden aren't starting every mm. game. And we all, I mean, we all recognise Phil Foden as a great player, yeah. I think. Yeah. And... When players like him aren't starting every game, mm. you're just like, what the heck? Mm. That's an impressive team, that. Of course, it has to be. And, you know, in the summer, if they get messy, yeah. that's just going to ruin yeah, everyone's... Holland. Yeah, uh, we'll talk about having yeah. that. But that's just going to ruin everyone's fantasy team. Like, yeah. oh, who, who's the first player you got? I've got Messi. Oh, Messi. Oh, yeah. and you just, everyone will just have a cheap team and Messi. Yeah. But, um, you know, you speak about Haaland. Honestly, the guy, just, the guy was made in the lab to score goals yeah. somewhere, you know? Um, I think he's got a cousin as well. Yeah, he's, he's just he's, scored yeah. fifty four in thirty. Yeah, games, maybe something in the maybe something in the in the milk they drink, or maybe yeah. the something in that Harlem family. Yeah, yeah, maybe they just eat goalposts yeah. for a living. <laughs> I don't know, but you, it's just crazy. And like you know, he he looks he looks amazing in that Dortmund side. Yeah, you know, he's he's big, he's strong. He's, he's only what twenty. He's confident. Yeah, I mean, he's just got he's oozes confidence. Mm. Everything he know, everything he drives just seems to work for him. Yeah, he knows his own abilities and he plays to them and he plays mm. them very very well. Mm. Like we don't expect him to go on a mazy run like we yeah. expect Messi from. Yeah, but we expect we do expect him to score goals and then he expects himself to score mm. goals and scores goals. Exactly, he doesn't struggle in any games. Yeah. Every game doesn't. Every game looks like it's his level. Mm. I don't think his next step is England though. I think his no. next step is out of the Lewandowski route. We'll I, see about I think he stays at Dortmund for another year. Mm. I feel like, I mean, Man United have got no chance of signing no, him. We'll never sign him. I don't think he'll come. I hate, I hate the rumours that, oh yeah, Man United will get Oli is Because Oli Ollie coached him for a while. But you, it, it won't happen. One of your greatest ever players also in, snapped his dad's leg. Yeah, because that, that, that's, that's a big yeah. contributor. That is a big contributor. And also, and he's a Leeds fan. Yeah, yeah, and also he wants to win stuff. He yeah. always expresses he wants to win. Why go to a team that's clearly a rebuilding project? But how many players do you think you are off winning a league title? Because I mean, you're second this year. You're mm. gonna come second probably. How Give many take, players do you think you are? I, I'd say three. Uh, we need we need a natural winger. Yeah. We definitely need a right natural winger. winger. Yeah. Yeah. Because obviously you know you could you could shove Martial and Rashford and uh, Paul Greenwood just stuck out there. Yeah. They're natural strikers. They're not yeah. really that. Um, another centre back. I think I think Lindelof and Bay have been average and passable, but with Mc, Maguire needs a decent yeah. as a centre back. You know 
when you talk about decent centre back partnerships, you know Ferdinand and Vidic come to mind. Uh, John Terry and Ricardo Cavaglia. Yeah. You know you need a strong two. Pepe and Ramos. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, Pepe, uh, Ramos and Varane maybe. Yeah, well, yeah. Maybe not so now with Varane because he's, no. bit, he's looking a bit. I've, I've, I've seen Varane's heavily linked for Man United. Did yeah, you know? exactly. Would so you be happy with that? I mean, the thing is, of the games you've seen of him, no, because obviously we watch him for a limited time. You yeah. know, we watch what ten percent of his career. Yeah. But he looks very disjointed and weird. Like in, in the World Cup, he was he was cruising around. You know. Winning the ball, going forward, and stuff like that. Maybe it's because the French team is so good. Yeah. But then when you see him at Real Madrid, he just looks like the shirt's heavy for him. He he has no idea what he's doing. Yeah, he's, that when, he's, when Ramos is missing, he's not the mm. same player. Which I want to see what he does next to someone like Maguire. Yeah. Like we know Maguire is error prone and yeah. slow. Yeah, exactly. And he would like to go forward as mm. well because obviously Varane likes to go forward as well. Yeah. But Varane obviously makes like that mistake he made against City where he tried to head it down or something. Yeah. You know, you got to ask, what are you doing there? You're, yeah. you know, you're a professional centre back who's been there, done everything in football, and you've done that. I know. Um, I don't won think three he, Champions League, yeah. and World Cup. He's won everything yeah. pretty much. He's exactly. He's been I think able to. And I think he has. Yeah, yeah it's crazy. He's won everything. I, I don't think he has. A, he's as fast anymore as he used mm. to be because of his obviously his leg injury and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. But um, you know, it'd be interesting to see if he can come to England and perhaps play more of a. Uh, a holding centre back role, yeah. maybe not going forward as much. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know, maybe he'll or in the, the right team, if Maguire can figure out how to play that holding role. Yeah, and then Maguire, and then Varane can make them runs into midfield, exactly. distribute the ball. But I don't know how good his distribution is. Mm. It's not looked great when I've seen him, but mm. like you say, we've not seen much of Varane together. Have yeah, we? And, and 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 the other thing is, I, we have to get rid of. I have to swallow my breath. We have to get rid of Martial and probably yeah. bring in someone like Harlan. I'm not saying Harlan himself. Yeah. But someone who can consistently score goals and be a twenty average goal twenty goal seasons right. I, I yeah. think we need that. We we definitely need that. You look at every team that's won the Premier League, even when we won it back when I was twelve or thirteen, I think, with Van Persie. You know, Van Persie was the highest goal scorer yeah. that season. Uh, okay, it helped that Suarez bit someone because he yeah. was hungry for some <laughs> Ivanovic, which helped. But you know, it does help having someone you could go to that, yeah, you're gonna score us the goals. As long as I do my job, he's gonna score me the goal. And I think at United the goals are coming from everywhere at the pitch, which isn't a bad thing, but you know, you, you got to ask yourself... You need well, a consistent goal scorer. Yeah. There's only so many times Scott McTominay can score a break. Exactly. And, and then teams will find you out. Teams will be like, okay, the striker, they clearly don't trust him. Yeah. Let's just mark the edge of the box. Let's stop the long shots and stuff like that. E.g., what happened with Palace? Palace figured it out and knew they could just park the glass. And knew well, I thought we'd see Cavani get a lot more minutes, mm. but apparently he wants to leave now, go back to Boca Juniors. Yeah. Uh, according to his dad, I yeah, don't know why you get your dad to say it. I don't know. I mean, he put a photo of him on his Instagram with him kissing the badge, but yeah. again, that could just be all PR, you know. Mm. You know, you could tell me that you still want to do this podcast and then go on the True Geordie podcast and take photos, <laughs> you know. Um, one day, maybe. Don't worry, I'm not doing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, then, like, he, you, you got, you've got that weird type of short-term solution for a long-term problem with Cavani because yeah. he's incredibly old. Yeah. Um. You know, against teams like Everton and stuff like that, he looked amazing. But now I think players have found him out that yeah, he's not he's not going to try and turn him with pace or anything yeah. like that. I mean, if you need a twenty goal a season striker, there's only one man for the job. Who's that? Big Charlie White. Yeah. He scored again yesterday. We were at Wembley on the weekend, Sunday afternoon. Is Wembley still cursed for some reason though? Probably. Yeah. Uh, we'll probably lose. We're playing League Two Tranmere, so if we do lose, it'll be absolutely awful. Mm. Probably very upset. Yeah. But it's a what, what is this? Is big weekend, this. Papa, tr- John. pa- 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 Papa John's trophy. How does the yeah. Papa John's trophy work? Uh, is it just one it's, final and then. Yeah, well, this weekend is last year's final, the mm-hmm. 2020 Papa John's trophy and the 2021 Papa John's trophy final. Because it got up at two days apart, or a day is, apart. Is that because of Corona? That, yeah, because because our season got cancelled, yeah. obviously. And it went on to a points per game mm-hmm. basis. Another farce of a reason. Yeah, exactly. But we. Uh, yeah, Portsmouth versus Lincoln this weekend on Saturday, uh, and then we play on Sunday versus Tranmere. Wow. So it might be the shortest time anyone's ever held the trophy for, because Portsmouth and Lincoln lose it the next day. Yeah, I mean that's a bit pointless. Yeah. Surely the company's made two. They got to make mean, two. You thought so. Yeah, like imagine going. Good- yeah, you know, you can let teams. You've got to put it in twenty-four hour yeah. quarantine. I, I, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like someone's just wiping yeah. inside. Like, Give us a second, lads. <laughs> you know, um, it's going to be weird watching that. And I think yeah. hopefully like that. 
And yeah, obviously you've got a really rich owner now, haven't you? So. Yeah, yeah, we've got twenty three year old owner finally gone through. Yeah. Uh well, I mean, it might do all right. Mm. I'm not sure how much experience he's got, but yeah. I don't understand why he bought Sunderland. What do you mean? We're a massive club. Yeah. But what do you think he wants to get you guys obviously that's probably the intention of I mean if he can he will we'll get promoted this year and he's mm. put no money in yet. Yeah. So if he puts a bit of money in and we stay as a mid table championship club, he's probably already made profit. True. And then obviously then you can push for the Prem. All we need yeah. all we need is if we win half the games all season, mm. our fans will be over the moon. Exactly. We haven't seen that for years, yeah. have we? So you know. Yeah, and hopefully the Papa. I mean, that, that stuff like the Papa John's trophy and stuff like that is like, yeah. it's quite weird how they had to do that because of COVID. Yeah, I mean that's pretty crazy. Wembley weekend. It's, yeah, it's. A, I think it's going to be quite a good event. It's a shame fans aren't there. Mm. Like, I'm, it's a shame that it's not just after we can get a few fans back in the stadium. Mm. Because I mean, to smaller clubs, to the not Premier League clubs, yeah. the fans mean everything. Exactly. Like, exactly. To Premier League clubs, you could play with no yeah. fans ever, for a couple of seasons at yeah. least. You could. Yeah, you wouldn't like to, no. but you could. Yeah, the Premier League could but probably survive two two seasons without a push. Most clubs. Teams like Tranmere, no. half the half the fans. Half the, I think a good seventy five percent. Obviously, besides Mike Dean, mm. probably live around the Tranmere area. Yeah. Exactly, Mike it means Dean. so much for Tranmere yeah. fans because, mm. like Man United, you've got so many fans worldwide. Mm. Not everyone can go to games. No, and obviously with us, Sky, BT, and even the BBC, our like push mm. have done. Give or take, great work on making yeah. sure all our games are promoted, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. broadcasted, compared to you know to like of Sunderland and stuff like that. You guys are on TV, I think every two weeks or something. We like were that. on TV last night. Mm. We won, obviously, because yeah. we're great. Right. Yeah. Uh, and then we're on TV on Sunday. But apart from that, I don't know how long it'll be until we're on TV. Mm. There's loads of Premier League games coming up, isn't there? Yeah, exactly. So, and mean, yeah, that's what I mean. Like, obviously, they've got every right to when we put the Premier League yeah, games on. Of course, but I mean like. They probably think like it's just an additional revenue they can get, obviously, because obviously there is that interest in Sunderland, there are interest yeah. in Portsmouth. You know, yeah, yeah. They're two, two of the biggest clubs in the league, yeah, aren't they? They're, so. they're big clubs, mm. old sleeping Premier League clubs in yeah. dormant. They, you know, they need to come back into it. Yeah, yeah. But you know, uh, it's one of those things. Oh, in the final, on the rules, do they use VAR or not? I don't think so. No. We are, well, they haven't used VAR for the rest of the tournament, so I hope not. Yeah, this is I, mean, I can just imagine us getting a 90th minute winner and it being ruled out for offside or oh, something. Oh, that'd be awful. Or taken back for a penalty for them. Mm. That'd be a classic Sunderland move, yeah. to be honest with you. <sighs> what do you think about VAR anyway, Jay? Uh, well, I think... Because we talk about this a lot. We, we do talk about it Every this week, something Every week something happens, happens, so you've got to talk about it, yeah. haven't you, really? I mean, I don't know if you watched that spurs Fulham game. Remind me what happened. Uh, when Fulham scored an equaliser. But it's, it, his hand was about there. Yeah. He touched his arm. Yeah. He bounced back, and then they Josh Madger scored yeah. from it. One of my favourites. Mm-hmm. But uh, Josh Madger scored from it, and it was ruled out for a handball. Yeah. And the very next day, they changed the rule. Like I don't know if they only ruled it out for a handball because it's top six bias. Mm. I mean, it's a big claim to make. Yeah. I mean, let us know if you don't agree with it. Mm. But it is a massive claim. But like, would it have been ruled out if it was Man United? Would it have been ruled out if it was Spurs? The yeah. way, if it was the other way around. If, well, Harry, if it came off Harry Kane's arm mm, and dropped to Son and he yeah, scored, yeah. would it have been ruled out? Yeah. Would it have even been checked? Exactly. Well, against Chelsea, we had one. Give or take, you know, if VAR didn't exist, I doubt that the ref would have gave it. But when they take it to VAR, I think, yeah, because then obviously I think it's Hudson Odoi does that almost palm away, mm. like, a, like a basket yeah, yeah. flicking it away. And then I was thinking, okay, that's definitely a handball, but. Yeah. I feel like under the refs' pressure, like now, obviously they don't want to see like bias, they don't want to deal with yeah. the criticism, so they're just like, ha ha, let's play on, you yeah, know. It might have touched his hand, but it yeah. didn't do anything. And yeah. then, um, you know, we had that one with the, what's that ref? Oh, this is a bit of a football pub quiz, but the ref who blew his whistle against Brighton, Dunk could have taken it, he takes it, he scores, the ref blows oh, the whistle. Oh, Mason? Uh, yeah, it might yeah. be. Lee yeah. Mason. Ten points to me. Anyway, yeah. yeah, with that is you're thinking, well, that's just unprofessionalism. And obviously, as a footballer, if you f- like, for example, f up like um, the other day, Robert Green was talking about his handball uh, incident where it went through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. G- credit to him talking about that. Obviously, yeah. but as refs, they seem to think, well, no one's going to ask me about this, you know. Well, they don't get they don't get asked, do they? They don't no. get held accountable. No, they don't get. Uh, no one, no one asks them after the game, no. like, why was that called or anything like that. They have the ref truck. I think BT have. 
or whatever they call it, the ref van, the ref mobile, where they sit there and then it's just like peak. It's old refs just going, yes, I think it was right. Oh, I, you yeah, know, they yeah, never he disagree. Always, yeah, he always agrees with them. Yeah, He's so, always like, oh, yeah. yes, I think the, the yeah, right yeah. decision, yes. But, oh, I don't know. Yeah, so I'd like to see refs being held, be asked afterwards, after games, why did, what do you think about this decision? Why, mm. why did you just send yeah. him off? Why did you not give him a yellow card for this? Why exactly. did you just give him a exactly. second yellow for that? Not that. I'd, li- I'd like to see that happen. Mm. Just a couple of media, or the, even, even not even the ref, because the team sends out like one player to do yeah. media duties, don't they? Usually it's the man of the match and then mm. the team captain on the losing side or yeah. whatever. But I'd like to see a, if a referee has to go out and make a speech or mm. go and ask some questions, face the questions, I wonder if we'd see less controversial decisions. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean... Yeah, I think it would be good to could to see and obviously like that. Obviously, some games, sometimes nine times out of ten, isn't it? There's hardly anything wrong. Mm. But with VAR now, we're seeing like a lot of like decisions. Like we think, well, really, yeah. should it be that? Yeah. And obviously, this is a game also all this time, so it's like okay, that's a bit on harsh with the offside rule and stuff like that. So yeah, it's just one of them ones, and obviously we have to see what happens with it in the future. But it's just one of them. But you know, I think it, in the Champions League. I think it's been okay with the VAR, really. Well, it? yeah, I'd say so. There was Haaland's penalty that was yeah. retaken the other day, mm. and he scored from the retaken penalty. Yeah. But no one had a complaint about the penalty. Everyone yeah. complained about his celebration, exactly. obviously, because it was his confident, I suppose, yeah. like we discussed earlier. Yeah. But I, I don't, I don't know. Mm. Yeah, you know, uh, it needs to change. But I don't. I'm not against the idea. It just needs exactly. a few modifications yeah. to make it perfect. And then obviously you got. Well, one last thing we'll talk about before is obviously, you know, we talk about teams going through phases and stuff mm. like that. The team for me that, uh, across football, that always knocking on a door but never really get there is Juventus. Juventus for oh, me yeah. have oh. gone to a lot of Champions League finals. Uh, they're a team that uh, dominate Serie A and, you know, this year they've just completely fallen off. Signed, signed one of the best players in the world and he's not, and you know, he's he's the not one made them any better. And he's the one getting all the sting. Which I think is a bit unfair, because again... But has he made them any better? Not really. Last couple of seasons, maybe, but... Were they any better? They won the, they won the, the, won the, won the Scudetto, which they won every year. Yeah, and then that's about it. And, and then this year they've fallen apart. Yeah, and then you, obviously, I don't know. They, I, they, it's just poor management as well. Like Aaron Ramsey was told that he's mm-hmm. leaving. Yeah. Then Taylor comes in and says, no, you're staying. And I think Ramsey's played so much. And it, it's not like Ramsey's playing a good role. No. I mean, but he, I think Rabio came on. I think he could have started, I don't know, but scores. And it's like, mm. have, we haven't seen Rabio this season. No, no. Why are they playing him? Um, Dybala wasn't there. Dybala doesn't get played at all. At all. Which and is strange. I can't, and I don't really understand it. Cause mm. it surely it opens the door for Dybala to go to Real Madrid or Barcelona. Exactly. Give him enough time. Sure. I mean, I don't know if Barcelona seven. can afford him. Yeah. I but think Real Madrid definitely can. Yeah, and, and they'll love someone like him. Mm. But then you see Ronaldo. A new Galactico in yeah. Dybala. Then you see Ronaldo. Try, like for example, I always talk about Ronaldo like this. Sometimes Ronaldo take has to take it upon himself. In the two thousand nine Champions League final, when we made against the great Barcelona team, arguably one of the greatest teams I've seen yeah, in my yeah. life, we were humbled. We were absolutely humbled. And but when we you see that game, Ronaldo's trying to do it all himself. You know, yeah. he's, he's trying to go for goals. And that was a side of Ronaldo I don't really like. And that Juventus, I think that's showing even even more. Yeah, getting knocked out of the Champions League yeah. last night by Porto. And I mean, fantastic from Porto. Credit to them. That free kick that Oliveira hit. Yeah. Oh, under the wall, brilliant. And that made me laugh because out all the times you see someone lying down, you're telling me not one person to just well, lie it down. Looked, it did look like it was a long distance out. Yeah. Um, but they anyway. always do it. I think. I mean, maybe now they'll be like, okay, lads, next week make sure someone's lying I mean, down. It looks like it looked like the wall was only there as a formality, so yeah, they exactly. would try and smash it through yeah. the wall. Yeah. And as anybody else smashed it through the yeah. wall, yeah. And then he, and he, he turned his back. Yeah. And again, went straight you through. You know, like um, I think who was a, who's this morning on Twitter? I think the next Juventus legend mm. uh, just slating him off. I know Del Piero said something has to change at Juve yeah. uh, after yesterday's could, game. How could it be that Pirlo is it Pirlo? Pirlo, Pirlo yeah, yeah. He just doesn't know what he's doing. I mean, probably. Is it too early? To, it's way it's too, too early. Too big a job, too early in his career. I don't think he's managed anyone before. No, no this is his first job. I mean, he only got. Mean. He didn't even have his um, coaching badges when he was appointed. Yeah. So he only got them over the summer. It's crazy. And now he's been, and now he's thrown straight in. At the, Top end of Italian football. And they'll have to bring someone else in. Probably get. Probably look at someone else who's available. 
I mean, like, but how do you get rid of Perlo? Do you drop Perlo to a secondary role, assistant? I mean, do you drop him into under twenty threes and give sort of a proven manager? If I mean, yeah, you know, Pir- Pirlo's a club legend. Mm. Yeah, he's a legend of Italian football. But like, like, like we've seen with Lampard and yeah. Chelsea, will Lampard ever go back to Chelsea? Probably not. Probably not. So. I don't know. And and the results aren't going the way. You got to think is it time to to, mm. to sink or swim? Mm. Do we get rid of him and try and you know hope that we can get to the promised land? Obviously, yeah. the Champions League is something that I think every Juventus fan. Anyone who's going to yeah. look forward to. Yeah. And now, they, I think they've just managed to scrape two to the round of 16, yeah. and then they've been out, knocked out by a good Porto side. Yeah. Credit to them. A great, great performance by Porto. Mm. They knew exactly what they had to do. Yeah. Went to Turin knowing exactly what they had to do. Mm. And they did it. So. And now we'll just. All credits to them. Yeah, and now we'll have to see what happens. Mm. I think Inter are running away with that league anyway. Yeah. I think Inter will do really well. I think Inter will, will become now this new strong team in Italy. I can see it. AC are getting there. I think AC are on the rebuild. Yeah. They can keep hold of Pioli for a while yeah. and they'll be alright. Na- Napoli are there, as, I think, as well. Mm. They're looking okay. And obviously Roma, uh, with Mkhitaryan and that, they yeah, look yeah. building. So there's that there's that sphere that Juventus, we, what we had, when we got Moisey in and we just slumped, that you could you could close the door on success for a long yeah. time. You close lock, you throw yeah, away yeah. the key and you don't know where the key is. And we send it up in a massive field somewhere yeah, in yeah. Or something like that. Yeah, I don't know. But you know, then you got that in place where they've got. Things. <laughs> yeah. So you know, it, you got you got to look at that, and you got to expand it, and you got to make yeah. sure that you can you get rid of him as early as you can, and try and bring someone in who can add stability to your club. But yeah, that's how I, that's my final point. I don't yeah, know yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I mean, I would like to say, Dybala to Liverpool. Just through yeah, discussing this podcast, I wouldn't say no. Cause, Cause, I mean, it looks like one of Liverpool's front three is yeah. going to leave. Dybala can play anywhere in yeah. that front three. And, and you know, Ronaldo is uh, Ronaldo. Ronaldo's going to Barca. Yeah, well, exactly. definitely. Barcelona can buy yeah. him fifty but, million. You know, maybe he can do a trade with him. I don't know. Yeah, well, yeah. obviously, Dybala's a different type of player mm. than Ronaldo is, but maybe something can work out with a cash deal. Mm. Um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see what happens to Juventus yeah. players of old, you know, players who. Are looking really good that simply aren't playing yet. Not, and they're not playing. Yeah, and Dybala is, is, is the how much faith they put in Pirlo. Yeah. Because if Pirlo stays for a while, Dybala's not going to want to stay. No, he'll want to go. He'll want to leave. And, so, for and me, Liverpool need an attacker. It'll be, Leo, Le, it'll be Liverpool or Real Madrid for the next yeah. stop. I, I think AC Milan are on the outsides because obviously the AC Milan yeah. will want to get him as well. But then you've played for three teams in Italy. Yeah. Which, I mean, that's mm. quite a few teams in quite a. And obviously, Seriously, and obviously you know, I think AC, uh, he's used to winning a lot, mm. and I don't think Milan, as much as I love the Rossoneri in a, in a, in a, in a nice way, they're not going to win anything no. anytime soon. They're still in the rebuild stage. They had that great run until January where they were unbeaten in the league. However, they, they started losing injuries, yeah. and you know the cracks are beginning to show, but they'll be happy with the Champions League finishing place because yeah. now they're back with the big boys. Yeah, I yeah. think they've cemented second place. I can't see anyone really taking that away from them, but I think Inter... It's their, it's their league to lose now. Yeah, right. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you for watching this episode of Chatting Ball Podcast with Sam and Ahmed. Cheers, guys. See you See next, next week. week.